unionization in production labor has dropped to next to zero. Uh, the number of uh, lockouts or strikes have uh, dropped by, I think, 3,000 uh, percent. So that's one big thing which has changed in the last uh, 15 years. Another big context which has changed is that the, uh, the Western manufacturing started in India last 20 years back. In the retail slash uh, uh, consumer facing environment. Before that, they, all the technology exchange were in the industrial products. So the industrial products, people, uh, manufacturing was used to working in a more westernized fashion. Uh, but now people have understood how to do it. Uh, but I would also like to add that there is an Indian way of getting things done. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> hire an Indian. <laughs> Obviously, each context culture is different. So, uh, and so it may not sound a method to you, but there is a method there, uh, which they understand. Hello, can everyone hear me? Hi. Hello. Um, what you just said, India failed you. Um, I had similar feelings about three years ago. And then I realized um, I was reacting too quick. Um, what Deep just said, you need to adapt, you need to be resilient. Where I disagree is you need to be resilient, but you don't need to adapt. You need to say the right thing, stand for it, but you need to have very deep pockets to be able to do that. Um, what Rob said as well, uh, you need to give the customer what he wants or what they want. And if they want cash on delivery, we've got to give it to them. At the same time, Deep was talking about there's a parallel cash economy running so if we as Western businesses, and I'm a British citizen, but I was born in India, so I probably see both sides of the coin. What I expect British businesses or European businesses to do is export business ethics as much as possible. Give them the insight that the, the, the only way forward long term is the right way. And it's, it's the difficult way. And that's why I came back, because um, I thought if I, if I carried on living in India, it was less than a year that I lived in 2011 and 12. I'd probably end up becoming a social worker. And I had a three-year-old daughter who wanted you know, better education. The mum had a career in town planning in the UK. We came back. Um, but what it gave me, it gave me an insight into why all of this. Um, and without going for too long, and Mike has told me, don't put people off India. Uh, <laughs> and I love India to bits. Uh, my retired parents lived there. I loved food. I was at the pool uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning last week at the Leela in Delhi. We loved it. Um, so there's the nice things. When you, when you go to the nice places, um, you love it. When you see the nice things, you love it. And when you don't see such nice things, uh, you know, it's the other extreme. India's land of extremes. Uh, you end up being a little bit confused. So if, if I'm allowed to carry on, um, I'd probably talk about what is the history? It was ruled by Mughals for about 300 years. It was ruled by Victorians for another 300 years. It only got independence in 1947. Goa, where I have some family property, only got independence in the 60s. So it's still a fresh uh, economy, fresh set of people, and they're all trying to race against time to catch up with the rest of the world. And that's why the shortcuts, the jump, we can't wait. Um, just as a, as, a, as a simple example, we've been talking about mobile phones, half a billion mobile phones in a country that has 1.2 billion population. Times of India in 2012 actually printed an article that there are more people who have access to mobile phones in India than to toilets. Now, there are, there are some realities where we need to tell the customer, if you only have 100 million landlines, why do you need 500 million mobile phones? There's one product that has no um, import duty. Can anyone guess what that is? When we export t-shirts, there's an import duty of 35%, but when uh, there's any arms and ammunition imported by the government, there's zero import <laughs> nah. Um, so it's, I wouldn't go in much detail, but India still is the largest importer of arms and ammunition. What happened to peace, yoga, eastern values? So those are things I think as West we need to export, that we were looking towards you for yoga, we were looking towards you for Ayurveda, and you know, peace, Mahatma Gandhi, what's happened to all of that? So for me, if I would summarize it, it's 
um, and I'm saying it with my Indian roots intact, it's the big Indian hypocrisy where we all need to look beneath the surface, get to the root cause, and, and not just give them what they want. Like Summer said, give them an Indian employee. No, no, no. Give them the right thing, that this is the right thing. It's a cause worth fighting for. Let's leave the hypocrisy behind. We know the richest man in India lives in a $2 billion house with a family of five, and there's a five-year-old kid begging for a banana to live on maybe 500 meters from there. So we need to look at all of those realities, and we just shouldn't hide from all of them that you know we're there to do quick business, make a quick buck. And that's my earnest request to this panel, that let's think of all of us as human beings. When you, when you get a cut or a bruise, everyone's blood is red, and we need to make sure they get the, the whole thing right. And it's a long fight. It's, it might turn some of us into social workers. But so be it. <laughs> but yeah, I'd not bore you any further. And I hope that's not put you off the Indian market. There's still a massive opportunity. And, you know, we, we're doing some business there. I'm not talking as an official representative of my company. I'm talking as more a Brit Indian who's had experiences of both sides half my life there, half my life here. Um, so hope everyone um, sort of gets the message rather than uh, the, the negative side of the message. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's change and challenge are the two words. Uh, is, any other questions? Sorry. Oh, go on then. So like uh, what Coves is doing is quite urban and it's going to focus on uh, the large 10 metro cities or the large 10 cities and it's not going to be focused on a rural. When I said rural opportunity, I think it's more about the site you said. You get a shoe for three pounds. Uh, and why that's changing and why, uh, why there is an opportunity there is you have a lot of farm money, a lot of agricultural money a lot of uh, agricultural based families in rural parts of the country who have who have who have the money who have a decent amount of middle class money or, or fairly large sums of money but they probably don't uh, go into the city as often they probably don't uh, have shops which are there in the cities as much uh, they are fairly well educated they are exposed to television so they are and the internet may be a little less but the television definitely uh, and they are uh, definitely exposed to western culture western habits Bollywood is a lot of western type of fashion in some ways uh, and how do you reach them uh, that's the problem uh, some parts of it I would say Tier 2, Tier 3, which is not really rural, but it's bordering Tier 3, is probably bordering rural sometimes, is uh, got access to the internet. Mobile access is going to grow. I mean, it's already there, but the smartphone access is going to go up. And that's where the opportunity will be large. Uh, when I talked about the rural opportunity, I also talked of it putting on my personal care hat was basic things like shampoos, shower gels, uh, soaps, uh, is a huge opportunity there. Hygiene is becoming a bigger factor there. Uh, and, and Unilevers of the world are doing a lot of distribution and a lot of hard work in building that rural distribution network. So as they do it, a lot of people are going to piggyback on it. Uh, they're going to piggyback on other consumer products which you can do. Uh, so yeah, there is definitely a rural opportunity. It depends where you are. I mean, maybe this audience is more urban fashion focused and maybe that opportunity is a little less. But as a country as a whole, uh, definitely there is. So was your question saying, is anybody focusing on doing that?
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, so in fact, uh, to, to your point, uh, Indian businessmen have very clearly identified this as an opportunity. And uh, uh, I don't know if you know, agricultural income in India has zero tax. There's no tax on agricultural income. So fundamentally, a person living in the rural part of the country has 30% extra disposable income. So that's one start where it starts from. Uh, the trouble to reach out to the, the same audience has been one awareness. So uh, the consumption has not been very high because the awareness in that audience has been extremely poor. Uh, it's I think I don't think so. The per capita GDP has been the issue in a large way, uh, but it, it, they just didn't knew or, uh, they were traditional clothing kind of people. They would wear the kurta pajamas, and that's the way it is. That's significantly changing, um, and I'll tell you with, with the clear stats in that direction. Uh, a youth in a village today is as westernized as a person in the metro. His his number of pairs with him would not be as high as a metro person, but he, he only wears trousers, he only wears shirts, he only wears t-shirts, uh, and it's exactly the same for women. But it's in the age group between, let's say, 15 till around 30. Uh, above that is the generation which is still in the other direction. So, in fact, one of the companies we have recently worked is the biggest retailer in the country called Big Bazaar. Uh, they come, came out with an application called Big Bazaar Direct. So what it does is it's a tablet-based application where the entire Big Bazaar inventory is given in a tablet to a small guy in a village or anywhere and he can go home to home and collect orders on the tablet and Big Bazaar directly delivers it to them. So we, we launched this last year on Independence Day, which was 15th of August, and the response has been fabulous. So I personally think that with technology and awareness getting across, you would see some significant disruption. In fact, this model is getting, uh, it became so popular, and it's, it's an innovation of its kind which happened, that uh, internet retailer globally is writing a big feature on it, uh, because it's very, very unique. <laughs> this can only happen in India. Uh, in, in that respect, because the need is only there. Uh, there is no other reason to do such a thing anywhere else. Uh, the second reason was that uh, in India, I mean, I think Kapil alluded to it, uh, there is a country which has been invaded and has been ruled.